So, ah, okay. Let's start. So, good afternoon. I'm Isoline Roger Dalbert. I'm working in uh, DigiGrow. And we are all here today to hear about the Enterprise Europe Network and how it can help um, well, your business to grow, innovate, and internationalize. I could speak for very long about the EEN, um, but we prefer today to um, well, let uh, the one uh, who are supporting SMEs and the one who have received uh, EEN support, so SMEs, uh, to speak and to tell you about the stories. So we are really glad to have on stage Maxim Adams from Innovate UK and well, two SMEs representatives, so André Moreira and Sylvain Massip, uh, were going to uh, give you uh, well, their feedback and uh, get you through uh, the EEN uh, client journey. So uh, it will be pretty quick, um, but enjoy the session. Thank you. Okay, um, right, well, hi, thanks for joining us, especially after lunch. Um, I'm really to set the scene here for this session that I hope articulates just how EEN currently helps innovative EU businesses commercialise, grow fast and scale. Um, increasingly, we're looking to those companies that, that can achieve that. I also would like to cover how we're evolving um, and fueling growth by shaping our service delivery to fit um, the, the new Horizon Europe agenda as it um, emerges and the EIC objectives. So making it easier for small businesses to become large innovators. Our services are all resolutely focused on growth and scaling. So we're providing innovative companies with what they need to commercialise and then go on to scale. So we help those ambitious businesses improve the way they manage innovation quite critically. Um, we help them access funding and finance, supporting the right blend of finance for the right stage of their businesses. Uh, connect those companies to new partners for collaboration and provide intelligent concierge support before, during and after uh, via people like me or like us um, from all across the network. We support them to expand and collaborate internationally uh, through over connecting to 69 countries. And importantly, I think in these really interesting times, we're increasingly supporting exponential growth by helping those innovative companies to scale faster. So we've only got a short time slot, um, and I am intending to go into some more detail about EEN. But first, I've got a bit of a backstory. So I hope that you'll bear with me. Um, my day job, as Isseline introduced me, is Head of Business Growth for Innovate UK, which is the um, UK government's innovation agency, who in 2014 had the foresight to bring together what was a disparate group of 11 UK EEN consortia together into one national consortium, recognising the huge potential the EEN reach, which is regional to national to international, offered them in support of their business growth objectives. Now, Innovate UK drives productivity and economic growth by supporting businesses to develop and realise the potential of new ideas. And we fund businesses and research collaborations to accelerate innovation and drive inve business investment then into R&D. And we connect those businesses then to partners, customers, investors, and so we can help them turn those ideas into commercially successful products and services and in turn business growth. And so Innovate UK is a really serious organisation and it takes really seriously indeed how it uses the public purse and the need to demonstrate return on that. So that return on that investment. So they didn't go into this partnership, Match Funding Enterprise Europe Network, lightly. Since 2017, for instance, um, an investment of two, two and a half billion they've returned something like 18 billion to the UK economy through 11,000 projects, working with some 8,500 unique organisations. So the business support that they offer has to stack up and be credible, relevant and capable of impact. So that's the backstory. Back to EN. Innovate UK decided to fund and coordinate a national consortium harnessing EEN because it does stack up. Um, in the main, in our case, for two reasons. 
um, an innovation and international advisor army on the ground. And in the UK, this is about 250 um, of these bodies with all this capability. And too critically here, because of the vast scope and reach of EN. So all, all those countries shaded blue are part of the network and businesses can access opportunities right across the globe. The local EN advisor, wherever they are, can connect the companies that we work with via these 3,000 other experts, just like us, across the network through 600 diverse partner organisations giving one-to-one -one support. And to give you some idea of how effective they are, some 70,000, some 70,000 international meetings take place each year to connect these companies to other businesses, technology centres and universities. So I plan to cover our two main strands of support, but the best way of really getting this and understanding how it really works is to actually hear from a client. We've got two of the real thing here for you later on, uh, but this is just a short video from one of our UK clients, LIG Nanowise, which is supported by our partner based in the northwest of England. I'm hoping the technology works, guys. Go for it. No, I don't think I've the, I'm not doing this. They are. Aha! Oh. I am doing it. <laughs> we can't hear it. Damn. So guys, are you having a go at this or do I talk past it? <laughs> it would be such a shame. It's such a great video, actually. I'm really proud of this company. Um, they started working with um, InVenture um, through um, our core services. Ah, here we go. LRG Nanowise is uh, an innovative optics company based in Manchester. We were founded in 2014. Uh, in terms of our innovation, it's centred around microsphere technology. Uh, and these are tiny transparent beads, um, which when coupled with um, objective lenses on microscopes, um, give vast augmentations to both resolution and magnification in optical microscopy. And in terms of our first product vertical, using this platform technology in optics, um, we decided to focus on um, super resolution microscopy where there's a challenge around the optical diffraction limits. So our initial challenges were around raising sufficient capital to start to build um, a bi an instrumentation business which is very capital intensive both in terms of highly skilled engineers and also in terms of equipment required to develop your innovation. So we were faced with these, this core problem initially and then also around what the right commercialization model might be and how we can engage with the industry to assist us in that process. So we've been working from, with Inventia for a number of years and we were introduced to the EEN program through them uh, and we saw this as a great opportunity to solve a number of business challenges that we had at that time. So Enterprise Europe Network and Innovate to Succeed are two fully funded programs and predominantly aimed at SMEs. We work with SMEs who are looking to innovate, who are looking to grow on an international scale. What I love about LIG is, yes, their technology, the potential impact of the technology in the life science and material sector, and the innovation culture in the company, which is amazing. And the last one is they are proactive in their approach when it comes to accessing public support program uh, rather than being reactive. So we initially started working with the EEN team in 2016 where our company was a pure startup with only maybe two or three employees. And since we've received that support and helping us to guide us along the way, we've grown into now a commercial operation with um, a range of international distributors, some initial products sold, and now a staff of over 10 employees. We've seen significant growth in the last two years and that has been facilitated by um, a lot of the advice that we have received through the EEN program, whether that was directing us towards relevant public fundings or giving us advice on IP issues where now we, have, um, we are building our IP portfolio um, with at least four initial UK patent applications filed now moving into the international phase. I would definitely
definitely encourage SMEs um, to look out for their local EEN network. The support provided um, is very fast, it's very tailored to your needs and that means that it can answer your specific challenges. As I said, I love him. Um, this is the first time that video has actually worked. Um, second time, it usually takes three or four times, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, this is where we are now, how EN is evolving um, and playing our part in making it easier for companies like LIG to become large innovators. So our mission is we're continually evolving, embracing the sustainability agenda and driving and supporting economic and societal growth through the work that we do with these companies. So this is actually how we're organised, um, e how we've organised EEN in the, in the UK. Um, but it's very similar, almost the same, they just probably articulate it differently across all of those 600 partner organisations. At the core um, is the, this reach to provide higher level information services. So we're drawing in capa our capability around single market access and internationalization. And then directing our intensive support accordingly by keeping the client at the center. So that's what the, um, the schematic on the, well, it'll be on your right um, is, is actually demonstrating. So offering global partnering collaboration support, but being smarter with our selection criteria and process so that we're making sure that we are working with the right companies and then more of those can then grow, go on to grow and scale. And then we're further segmenting, and this is a new addition, our startup to scale up offer. A small group, the best of the best, um, for a high-end scale up support service. And this is repurposing our enhancing innovation management support um, Andrew on the LIG NanoWise um, video talks about innovate to succeed. Um, we feel that enhancing innovation management capacity is a bit of a mouthful, so we, we changed it. Um, but the whole point here is that we're integrating our whole service offer, including the IP support, access to finance and investment readiness, so it works for the company. By way of a, a, just a detailed snapshot, our international services work across the whole ecosystem via brokerage events, facilitating face-to-face -face meetings, via our partnering database for online opportunities, and via facilitation of direct contacts working with our EEN advisors. And we're then supporting businesses to access new markets and with new product development, um, technology transfer, incorporating new technology, um, co-development, and then finally R&D by helping to build research consortia. Our innovation and growth services are bespoke. This is a larger version of the, the diagram earlier, and they're designed to fit around the client. Innovative SMEs, those with high growth potential, um, can receive up to nine days tailored support. And our new model, and this is what this is actually trying to illustrate, facilitates entry at whatever stage the business life cycle a company may be. So we're segmenting them according to where they are, their business growth life, life cycle personas, uh, for want of a better way of, of considering it, and their needs, whatever their needs are at that stage. So it's not a sausage machine, this isn't a program, this is about responding to the company. So as businesses grow, they have completely different needs, uh, so it doesn't really make sense to have a one size fits all. An early stage business has completely different funding needs to a company that's going into growth. And I know that Andre and Sylvain are going to touch on that. Um, so it's really important that we're supporting them to move along that continuous innovation pathway. So I've got a little thing that says time, so I'm going to try and shut up. Um, a final word, if you just bear with me, our scale up services, or well, possibly not, you won't be able to read this, but we're really proud of this in Enterprise Europe Network. Um, we have a novel model where we have a scale up board comprising 12 scale up directors 
who work collectively um, with a matrix of skills and experience. So they're offering companies the might of that board experience, but with one account manager that's connecting them. We're working closely with the London Stock Exchange and the Scale Up Institute to make sure that we're developing alongside companies as they need. So with that, I'm going to hand over the baton to, I believe, um, Andre. And thank you very much. Ah, you do need this. <laughs> Good afternoon. And uh, first of all, thank you for having me here today, coming from the trenches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And what I will tell you today very briefly is, is what we do as a company and, and how the EEN helped us to come to where we are and what we see in the future and where we think that EEN can continue to help us. Going very briefly, what we do or what we are solving as a problem, you don't have to read the whole slide. Essentially, what's happening out there is that there is a crisis that most people are not realizing, which is on the soil. We are losing soils every year it's I'm Portuguese, so to, to give you a sense of it, one Portugal is disappearing every year in the world from arable land. Now, at the same time, we have more and more people. So there is that, that little graph there showing, showing basically where this is going to go. How can you actually feed all these people if you're losing soils? And that's where we come in. We have a solution for that. It's our product. It's called Novi Home. It's a technology platform, in fact. It is based on lignite. Lignite is brown coal plus chemistry. We do chemistry on that, and with that, you create a high-value humus material. When you put that in the soil, basically what you do is you turn a poor soil or a tired soil in a soil that is healthy and active again. Okay? I mean, have some pictures there. Essentially, what we are talking about is that you have better soils. You just have sustainably higher yields, better growth, better plants, and all that. So, this is what we do. Uh, we have also a lot of uh, university partners that we use to show that this product works and all that. And I'll come to that in a few minutes. We are already commercializing. We have loads of customers all over. Well, not all over, but in a lot of places. And here's where the EN came in. This was, um, in fact, in creating the material, you have to, well, you have to build a factory to start with. And... This was uh, in 2015 and 16 when we built this first proof of concept factory. It's 1,000 tons production capacity per year. In agriculture, that's not a lot, but it's big enough to prove the concept, to prove the, the scalability of the technology. And that's where we got a lot of support from the uh, EEN I mean, through our partners in it. And uh, with, their, with their support, we got the SME instrument Horizon 2020, two and a half million euros that we got as a grant to build uh, this factory. To give you guys a sense of the kind of business this is, we have been financed also by uh, venture capitalists as well as now family offices. Since our inception 2012, we have received, if I count the European money with it, 20 million to come to where we are right now, okay? So it's quite capital intensive. We are now going to the next stage. And why do we go to the next stage? I mean, we want to expand our factory 10 times because as you will see in this graph, we have, uh, well, in the first half of the year, we already sold more or less double than what we sold the full of last year. So soon, we'll have the luxury problem of running out of uh, material, which is a great thing for, for going commercial. And that is where uh, we see really the next stage of help that we'll need from, from the European uh, network. Why is that? Because as, as you can understand, when you get the Horizon 2020, you get the kickstart. You come to a point when you start um, expanding. In our case, as you see there, we are selling in Germany, we are selling in Spain, Portugal, and parts of the United States. Established customers, uh, great network. And now comes to the point where it gets really expensive. Right? When you're making a larger factory and all that, that's get really <coughs> the next stage. And that's where we see that the, I think the uh, Horizon program that is coming up, Horizon Europe, with this kind of mixed programs, with equity and, and loans and so on, I think that could be very helpful for us. And uh, I was already talking to our partner from, from Zenit, Anna, uh, please help us navigate this because we, we have to go after that. But that doesn't stop there. And then I will stop my last slide. What are we seeing in the next five years and where we think that we'll be able to also use 
the help of the EEN. I mean, I already gave you this, this heads up. I mean, we're developing this new uh, technology, so we have the new factory coming up, we have new products, but also we are doing things as we call making it smarter, which means we're also using uh, uh, digital technology to make sure that we can provide a platform into um, precision agriculture so that you can actually use this material together with the precision agriculture instruments. And that's, again, where we think that we can get quite a bit of, uh, of help from this network because we have to navigate that. We don't know all the people involved in these in this areas, and we need also help there. So this is about us. From the trenches, we're in the middle of it. And I'm very, very grateful to Zenit and all the work that they have done with us and uh, looking forward to the, to the next steps as well. Because creating a business like this from scratch, it's a new product, it's a new factory, totally new technology, has immense uh, uh, challenges. And you can only do that as a team and with all the help we can get. With this, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm Sylvain Massip. Um, let's start with a few words about myself so that you understand from where I speak. Uh, so after graduating, I uh, joined a really small startup that is called Natural Grass and that uh, is uh, developing a technology to make sports ground, uh, grass sports ground safer and more resistant. Uh, I have been their research and development director for uh, seven years and at the beginning of this year I created a new company, Obsidia, um, which is uh, uh, analyzing scientific articles with artificial intelligence in order to extract uh, technological intelligence, uh, technological intelligent data. Um, and so what I'm going to tell you about is the story really of natural grass, so the, the seven years, as I said, I joined the company with a patent and not much more, with a handful of people really trying to uh, get a product <coughs> on the market. And I have left uh, a booming SME uh, with uh, more than 30 people, a few million euro turnover and, uh, and the factory. Uh, so I was lucky enough to see really uh, different phases uh, of the development of the company. And at each of these steps, uh, we had collaboration with people in uh, EEN, and they were very useful at each step. So first, the technological uh, development. Uh, getting from an idea, from a patent, to a commercial product is something that takes time. We had some finance, a blend of uh, public and uh, private funds, but uh, we always uh, needed a little bit more. And thanks to EEN people, we were able to identify really the, the right call. Uh, people uh, at EEN, they are uh, members of the local ecosystems of the startup. So they are very well positioned to actually uh, orient people to the regional calls, the national calls, or the European calls that will uh, suit the, the stage of development of the company. Uh, so we had a lot of uh, regional and a few national grants, and we also had a, a collaboration with uh, EIT Climate Kick that was really enabled by, uh, by uh, uh, the collaboration with EEN. Then in uh, 2013, we had finally our first uh, client. Uh, it was a relatively small uh, stadium, but with professional football uh, still played, uh, played in it. Uh, and it was actually a big success. And uh, it was the time when uh, people were preparing for Euro 2016 in France. It was a great opportunity for us. Uh, the, the market was uh, really uh, in demand for, uh, for a new technology. Uh, and we managed to, uh, to sign a few uh, very large contracts, very, very exposed. You can see here uh, the stadium in Lyon that hosted several games uh, of the Euro 2016. And so we had to accommodate this demand and we had to industrialize really uh, 
same story at what uh, Andre said. <laughs> uh, and for that, we, uh, we also needed to scale up uh, the process and to scale up the company. Uh, for doing that, um, people uh, at EEN directly oriented us to SME instrument. Uh, we worked with them and we were lucky enough to uh, be funded. And uh, same story as with Andre, that helped us scale up our process and create a factory, which is really a, a great moment for a company when you open your first factory. It's really, really great time. Uh, so thanks to that, we could actually move to the next step of the company, and it was really its international development. You can see here uh, the, on the right the training center of Real Madrid, and on the left uh, a stadium in uh, Japan, where the Rugby World Cup is played uh, these days. Uh, and both of these are equipped with natural grass technology. Uh, in order to uh, to get to that stage of uh, uh, of development, we also needed to to collaborate with uh, with EEN, and they they have done a great job to um, coordinate the different uh, the, the, the different people. We have worked with EASM, as I said, we we have worked with uh, uh, EIT Climate Kick, uh, and really all this was uh, facilitated by uh, Enterprise uh, Europe Network. Uh, so thanks to this collaboration, we had uh, a lot of coaching, we had also a lot of communication uh, in uh, non-French journals, and that really helped uh, scale up the company and sell our technology abroad. So finally, thanks to EEN, uh, the, the move from startup to scale up was not so painful, and this is probably why I feel quite confident to start all over again from zero and create a new company. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so many thanks, uh, Max, Sylvain, and André um, for your presentation and for keeping the time. We have quite a pressure. We started a bit late, so we are now a bit late, but not because of you. Um, maybe we could allow for one question, and if you want to discuss a bit more uh, with uh, Max, Sylvain, and André, we will be staying at the information booth about Cosme and the Enterprise Europe Network, which is at the entrance. Um, so do you have any questions? Just one, I think, and then we have, I think, to, to leave the room. Cool. No, one question. Is there, if there is no question coming from the audience, uh, uh, I have a question because I know both projects now. <laughs> and um, to get involved into this innovation procurement might be a good thing that the products that public uh, procurer can be the first catalyst catalyst to buy products, uh, perhaps this is something you could give an answer to? <laughs> I, I have a very clear answer to that. I mean, yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, I have been drumming around in, in Germany. I have been in Berlin a few times and in, 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 in not High Westfalen as well, trying to convince people, let's make here a big project, big, I mean, Maybe this didn't come across through my presentation, but we really want to change the world here. We are doing something that really can be very fundamental for improving soils anywhere. And one of the visions I had is to start up a, a, a big project in a PPP to say, let's pick up somewhere, be it in Brandenburg, be it in southern Spain, never mind, anywhere, 100,000 hectares, and let's make that, that land really good. And I would be prepared as a company to come on that even without the profits. To do this in a way that we're not losing money, but we're getting the data, and we're doing this on such a large scale that it just makes something really good for Europe, for the world, and, and shows the value of what this, what this is there. So this would be, uh, so I have been talking to a lot of people about this. Of course, people think first, oh, this guy is totally crazy. <laughs> but that would be an angle that uh, the procurement could be really interesting for us as well. So yes, I'm definitely looking for this kind of opportunities. And for uh, myself, so natural grass, um, actually our clients are 
uh, anything from uh, cities to uh, uh, PPPs to uh, private consortia. Uh, so indeed, um, the procurement and all of them are large. So it was very difficult as a very small company to interact with them. Uh, and indeed, the question was like, who are we going to get our f first client from? And it was actually from a public procurer, uh, the, the city of uh, Troyes in, in France. Uh, and there was there really a team of very dedicated people that really believed in our technology. Uh, and they, they wanted to, to, to have our technology. We were too small to really answer the, the the tender, but we could partner with a larger company, and with that, uh, we managed to have a uh, first client uh, from public procurement. So that was uh, really, really great. Finished. Voilà, finished. Thanks a lot for your attention, and thanks a lot to the speaker. That guy. That's good.